you for joining me today on this little project. It's designed to go in the corner of the room, which is why the arms are on this angle and not either side of the seat. I'm only going to be recovering the seat cushion, so let's get on with it. My concern is that it doesn't quite go in at the back, and also this arm doesn't seem to go in the right position compared to here. If I turn it over, because I need the best side to work from, it's even worse. Didn't expect to see a zip in here. So I'm wondering if the zip is actually pushing it out slightly. I'm gonna take the cover off and put the foam in. Cut a little piece out of here. Well, it's actually quite a big piece. And I did the same on the front here. And now the cushion sits quite nicely in there. It's still a little bit open on this side. It doesn't come over the front as much as it did. I'm quite pleased with that. When you look at this, you can see where it doesn't actually line up very well. So I'm gonna bring that to the front, where I think it should be. That goes around here. I'm gonna put a pin here, where that comes in, and a pin here, like that. And I'm going to do the same on the back here. I'm gonna put a pin corresponding with the outside edge there, and then here, that one needs to come back slightly. Then two pins around here as well, there and there. It's a little bit further out than the original seams. That's okay, that comes down. That comes to the front border. Now I'm going to cut this in plain cotton first. I'm gonna lay that out like that so it's nice and flat. And I've doubled the fabric so I can cut two out at the same time. I'm just gonna cut this out like this. You could pin it if you wanted to. I'm actually gonna go up like that and along the top then recheck everything as to where I really want it to go. It's better to cut something out too big and have to go back and make it smaller than to cut it out too small, then waste fabric cutting it all back out again. Now the front I am happy with, so I'm going to just carry on going. Fold that over like that so that everything is in line and I'm going to do the same with this. It's all lined up there and then it all looks a bit wonky here but this was more or less correct which means I'm going to cut this corner out like that because whatever was going on, it wasn't that far out. This one here, these two line up and I need half an inch. So I'm going to cut that one all the way to here, fold that back, but I'm not going to cut it that far back here. I'm just going to cut it in like that. This end, I have this one lined up, which is a little bit further out than this one. I'm going to cut in to here no, I'm not. I'm going to cut into here so that it is in line for that one. And I'm going to cut this out like that all the way across to here. Here I have the top corner, which I actually wasn't very happy with. So I am going to cut over half an inch from this one across. So it should be a little bit further over like that. I'm going to check that all of this fits nicely. And if there's any discrepancy here, I'm gonna put pins in to show where I need to cut it to. My friend came from Seattle. Coyote fur with satin lining. It's actually quite nice to feel. It's soft under here and it's a little bit more coarse on top. This is what I'm making the new cover out of. I need the fur to come this way down. It does go into the side here, but I think it'll be fine. I am going to take the satin liner out. I get asked to do all sorts of things. The reason my friend is giving me this is because in Texas, we really don't need to have really thick coats for too long in the year, maybe a month or so at the most, and out of a month of really cold weather, it's only a few days here and there. I'm going to take this out so I can use as much of it as I possibly can. Working on some projects, it's a real learning curve as to where to go and how to do it. I'm going to just carry on going all the way around. I didn't realize this was how they were gonna do it. So we've got a strip of fur, and then there's a strip of suede in between. That's interesting. You don't find these things out unless you take them to pieces. Take that all the way up. It's surprising how much of something you need when you repurpose it. I've decided to cut it out of the lining first. I only need one piece because it's going underneath. This is the front facing. I'm going to open that up like that. Fold this over like this. See where the warp and weft thread would be and I am going to cut all the way along here like this and cut this two and three eighths all the way up. 
I'll keep those two pieces of fabric as much together as I can and cut my border out of here. I'm keeping the interlining because it helps make the fabric that I'm sewing look a little bit thicker than it is, especially as it's going on to a thick fabric, which is the fur. I should get a couple of nice long lengths out of this. I do hope that this is not going to be a chair that's used very often because the stitching either was never there properly in various places or it's given over the years and I have a feeling looking at it that it might never have been done properly. There's quite a few patches like it. You pay good money for a coat and then find out that it actually wasn't made very well at all. By pulling this all the way down I can bring that into there. Then I've missed the armholes here and on this side. Unfortunately I won't miss some of those holes in there. When you are cutting fur, just like you do if you're cutting fake fur, just cut the skin or the backing like this. So I'm going to have to be very careful to literally just cut the back and not the front. As I say, this is how you cut fake fur as well. It's going to take a little minute to get all the way around cutting it like this, but it will be worth it in the end. If you don't do it this way, what you end up is with flat ends to your fur and not this nice flowing piece here. I'm going to sew across most of this front. I want to put the insert in. Border in reverse really want to be too much into this because it's the bias and it will twist. I'm going to have to leave some of it in the bias so I'm going to put a reverse then from this side about an inch in. I don't want to go too far in. I'm going to join the two pieces of the back border together. Forward and reverse at both ends. I want it straight. I'm going to mark the center. Make sure that that's still the inside. So that goes there. Open that up like that. What we would assume is that that is going to come here and around, but it's not. This is going to be a little bit further back because I need to have a nice square edge for the border. Pre-cut into that corner there. Sew forward. I need another stitch. Flatten all of that back out and put that next stitch in and then twist it into place. Before I do sew that in, I'm going to just put a little clip at a slight angle on there, not very much one, and sew this into place. I'm going to keep this level. So a little bit past the turn, lift the foot up, then turn this into here and open that up at the back and sew to the corner. Before I get to the corner, let's put that down and that on top. I'm going to cut in like that from the corner. Foot up, needle down and sew along here. I'm going to do that all the way around this side. Because I've got to be able to get the border to go around those cutouts. Before I go too far, I'm going to just cut that in so it's straighten out and I'll do the same here as well. It's a little bit fiddly and the reason I want to do it on this first is to just make sure that everything that I've got is going where it needs to go before I start messing with the top fabric because that's something I'm not going to be able to keep on doing and putting back into shape. The leather shouldn't be too bad to sew this time because it's a lot thinner than what I did the other day. And on round. This is where I started on this side. So I'm going to measure up from there to there and that's how deep one side of this is. So there's my seam. Measure up there to there and mark. Having marked it one side I'm going to mark it on the other side as well and I'm going to come into that corner. So let's sew into here. Needle down foot up, sew into that corner and a little bit past. That is where I need to sew to and then go down. So I'm going to cut in from the top here across and into there because that's where the turn is. Before I do that, just to make sure I'm thinking what I'm thinking is correct, I'm going to measure half an inch, which actually takes me to where I've done that, and I'm going to just cut down. So that needs to come out into that corner and turn. I think it's a bit generous actually. A couple more stitches should take me into here, I think. Pick it up. I did do that from the wrong place. So I've got to cut underneath, not on top. Pull this around and into place and sew to this corner here, which is across the front of here. 
then start going all the way to the back here. That has to be pulled level with that and I'm going to go over like I did before and then start pulling everything back into position going back around the second side of this so that I can head towards the back of the seat cushion. The first few turns should automatically fall in place but I will make sure that as I go round that these are pulled in because I don't want it to be uneven. So like this one comes here and that has to go there. So that's actually correct and I'll just check each one as I go. Nice thing about this fabric is you can fold it and put a crease in where you want to be. Make sure this is marked both sides like this and again I'm going to make my way around. At least this way I know how it's going to work when I put the top together. I'm coming into where I started towards this corner and I'm going to cut in like I do every other time. Keep that straight. Let's see if I can make a nice turn. Let's cut there on the underside. It's a bit close because there really isn't very much room. I'm dreading putting piping on the next one, especially with the fur top. I'm holding that at right angles there. So I'm digging down foot up into this corner. Really isn't very much room here at all actually. Cut in at this angle here. I think that's more or less where I need it. And let's see how we get on. And then turn everything into place. If it's a little bit off it won't matter. Matter. push that all the way back up there and sew it in see how it looks when you're doing a shape to cushion always make sure that all the shaping is where you want it before you put the cover over it that's for that corner I'm going to fold it in half to make sure it fits in this is a little bit loose but I'm not going to worry about it and I'm not going to fill it out because the new cover going over is a little bit thicker and it will take up any looseness. It fits nicely. If I tip it over, it just doesn't fit quite as nicely. So I'm hoping that the cover I've actually cut out is for the right way. We'll find out in a minute. I'm using a ladder stitch, so I'm gonna come up a little bit behind where I finished stitching across like that and then across to the top fabric and in. Stitches are about a quarter of an inch or thereabouts. Smaller is better. Back in opposite where you came out of your original stitch and then immediately opposite and across. This creates, if you opened it up, like a ladder of stitching and you just pull it tight and work your way across the opening. It's very simple and it is very effective for closing in your work. When you get to the other end, over stitch it to cast off. I've been trying to decide what to do about these openings and I've decided to leave them. I don't think this chair is going to be very well used, if ever. I think it's more for show. The other thing is I have to bear in mind that this was being worn. I don't know how long she's had it, but if it's held together this long, I think it's probably going to hold a bit longer. Pin the underside to this all the way around, making sure that the fur is up and that both the top and the bottom match exactly. And I'll make my way on round to the other side and even it out where needed. All I'm doing is just nipping back and pushing it back while I do it. And I'm doing it section by section. So that's that section done. I will pin that into place and get the next section done. Only so that I know that the fur is going where it needs to go. And I'll do this section, cut back so that it's a little bit easier to sew. Not through to the stitching underneath. Most of it's under fur, so it's really quite thick and fluffy. Push all of that up and then pin this section into place. And hopefully these two pieces will fit. Let's pin it across ways to hold that in line. Push that underneath there. I have my walking foot on in the hope that it actually works. Push the fur under as it wants to come out. And I'm going to try to keep this in line as I I go backwards and forwards there, push everything under and up and keep my half inch seam allowance in the right place. Push everything up and sew the next section. I'm going to work my way across the front border. So I've still got walking going on but I'm going to work my way on this side down and with a bit of luck they'll walk together and into place in the center. I'm just hoping this is driving me crazy. Sometimes you are going to get a project that really pushes you into thinking of new ways of doing something. I think 
Part of the problem is because this has been put together in strips, it just doesn't want to do what it's meant to do. And maybe just pushing it up and making sure those strips don't pull out might be the best way for me to do this. Keep everything in line and in place, including all that fur. Adjust everything yet again and sew. At least this side, I can see where there might have been folds in the fur. Looks like everything's being pushed the other way, so maybe that's the way I had to do it in the first place. There's a couple of places here the first strips were almost folded on top of each other. I'm going to come in and just over stitch those stitches there so nothing comes apart. About an inch. Really. As I look under here, all the fur is up to the edge, and if I do that, it comes over. There might be a couple of places I've got to rework, as in to pull the fur out from underneath, but I think all in all that works. I've got the piping lined up, I've got the liner here, and I'm going to sew this into position. If you put this around it, it helps keep it plump. If you are using a liner like I am, join this without the liner. If you join the liner at the same place, you will find that the liner and the top fabric will get lumpy underneath. Always join them separately. I'm going to open the seam like I would do normally, bring that across and that across and stitch into place. When you get closer, make sure that all of that is in line. With this, I am going to tuck that under there, about a quarter of an inch, bring that over the top and that in underneath and so on through. I'm having to think outside the box here. This is tape. This is the piping that would be going on. The tape is a little bit narrower than the piping flange. What I think I'm going to do is to the side that it's going to mirror. This is going to go on here and I want to make sure that both sides are the same. I'm going to cut that there. Pinned my piece from one side to the other to match with that. I won't be cutting anything back because the fur goes this direction. If I take anything off the top then I'm going to be losing some of the fur that's going there. I am going to sew it from the top down to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. I've managed to get that piece into place and I'm going to just carry on all the way around matching the top side of the fur to the opposite side so that I know everything matches. It's going to take a little minute to get everything done. I am going to start putting the piping on. I'm starting underneath because I don't want to have to mess with the fur when I'm joining anything. I've stay stitched all the way around to make sure that nothing stretches. I'm starting towards the back corner which should make it easier for when I put the join in. I want a little bit of length at the back in order to line up everything as I work it out. The trouble is I'm going straight into a corner. Turn the fabric underneath and pull the piping hard back so it goes around that corner. I know what I forgot to do. Bring that down. It was cut into the corners. So you get so caught up in what you're meant to be doing, you sometimes forget bits that you should be doing. It might not be in the right place, but it should be able to give me enough turning to come on down into this corner. The other reason for putting the sewing around was also to keep the bottom and the top fabrics together. You don't want to have those separating. Let's go over one and then pull this into position and come forward. Needle down, foot up, and then cut into that corner, foot down, so I can make those couple of extra stitches into that corner. Lift the foot, leave the needle down, twist it into position, pull that piping hard round before you drop the, everything into place, and so. It's not complicated, it's not hard, it's just very awkward. Open that up, cut into there, and then start putting this side in. I'm going to be going into the fur. Now on this particular corner, I don't want to be cutting any fur out, but what I do want to do is cut my corner in about half an inch to open that up. Push the fur forward and keep that at right angles as I sew into that corner. Pull those threads and then I'm going to push the fur back into place. Come into that corner, keeping this corner here at right angles. I don't want to open that up too soon over about half an inch. Open the bottom out as 
well as I can and I'm going to sew this to this corner here a couple of stitches to start off with and as usual cut the flange of the piping lift everything up pull it into place push all the fur down this would be exactly the same method if you were to use fake fur I'm going to pull that hard round underneath first and then drop that into place there and then sew forward this is going to take a little bit of time because I have to keep pushing the fur away. The flange of this has to be sewn on the first side of this tape. To the corner. And I'll be doing exactly the same as I've just done to get around all these corners. I decided to quit while I was ahead. I broke a needle. That's usually a sign for me to stop doing whatever it is and change my strategy. I'm going to iron over half an inch seam allowance on both sides. What I can do in a minute is just go over like this and steam it into place because this is going to be my sew line and it will save me having to measure across all the way as I sew the border into place. This is going to take me a little minute to do and I'll repeat that all the way along both sides of this. Having folded it over, I'm going to pin this into position but only a couple of pins at a time. Here's my starting point, then there's my next point. I'm going to fold that out towards the border so it's not too tight. I measured it so that it would go around the corner so the join wouldn't be on a side that shows. That will come at the corner and go in just over a quarter of an inch. I kind of want these to be like homeward bounders because I don't want it to be too tight on here. Into the border and back out. Then opposite where I come out of the border, go in just under the piping like that, quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to pull those few stitches tight. Not too tight, just tight enough to hold. Come into the border like that. Now I think... Judging by the way that's slightly creased, I might want to go slightly ahead rather than exactly opposite. It's not even an eighth of an inch. That looks better. Although it dips in, it's not a little crease like that. We're on this side, I just double check. Slightly ahead of myself, but not by too far. Quarter of an inch, so it's nice big stitch. And then just slightly an opposite. Pull that stitch tight. And then a little bit further forward and in here. I'm going to do that all the way along the top of here to get this in and then across the front. I'm going to remove this pin, push that out into that corner and into place here. Now I really don't want to put pin marks in so I'm putting them quite close to the top there so they shouldn't be that obvious. I came out there into the border and forward. It's going to be slow progress but it's better than stressing yourself out because it won't go around corners. I'd much rather have a relaxing session hand sewing than to be totally stressed out today. The amount of time it will take to put this in or to fight it in is probably about the same. You know, all that time adds up. So sometimes it's easier just to go, you know what, I'm going to hand sew it in. I'm going to have a stress free hour or two doing it the good old fashioned way. I'm going to move that pin forward again with the pre-ironed seam allowance already in place. That saves a lot of time too. So this is where I'm going to sit down, listen to some music and chill. I'm coming into this end here and here is the centre of the front. I'm going to take this back just slightly. This took a little bit of planning because this has to come down at an angle like that. So I am going to take it off to about here to start off with. It's quite generous. Then I'm going to mark the centre there. Fold that back and try to to work out where the center front is and I think it's about here it's really awkward to do I have been struggling with this so if my center front is here my corner to come into is and I had to play with this a couple of times to get it right on the other side I think a couple more stitches to take me to here and then I will try it again I think that's it because there's the center and there's the center the fabric is so slippery it just doesn't want to work so I'm going to take it two more stitches in or thereabouts. I've cut this back a little bit so that my center will line up with the center here. It still looks like it's too wide. This is trial and error you need to work corners out like this in little increments because I'm trying 
trying to get that to be a nice corner and that's nearly it let's make sure that that thread is not on the back side when I cut it I can always take this stitch out if it's in the wrong place fold that in where's that center mark that comes down a little bit I think if I push that back a little bit more it will all go in I've put a pin on there so that that will come down I need to take a little bit more out of this corner so it's not so bulky then sew it into place I think I like where that is put all of that in then sew it like that see I've got the other one in but it took me quite a while to line everything up until I was really happy with it take your time on awkward areas I've managed to go around that side I'm going to put a couple of little stitches in the corner so it holds as I then pull this down and that into place across the top there it's always wise to put like an over stitch as you change direction it just holds everything where it needs to be tiny stitch in there and pull it tight unfortunately I'm on the side where the fur is going to catch up with me that's where I want to change direction I'm going to do a little over stitch to double catch it just to make sure it's secure then I'm going to change direction I think what I want to do is go along the top here a little ways like that fold this side down and into position and force this to come round the top like that if I catch the first couple of stitches into place they're only small when I change direction because I want them to be as firm as possible and I should be able to make my way across the top now in a straight line bring that down it wants to curl down because it actually comes back out at an angle but just let it do what it wants to do if you've got funky angles until everything is stabilized I'm going to get to this corner here and then put the seat in and finish up so it looks smart thank you for joining me this has been an interesting project it's been a very frustrating project all in all I think it's come out looking quite good. My friend wanted the fur to hang over the edge, which it does. I think if I was to do it again, I would stabilise the fur onto curtain lining so it can't move. And I would have used a more robust fabric underneath, maybe a chenille, a velvet, or even a faux suede. Also, I would have used a softer piping. This has paper in it, and it really didn't want to bend where I wanted it. Where the little indents are, there's a number of folds that need to go into it, which meant that folding that paper around it was a little bit more difficult than if I'd used a cotton interior or a rope piping. But I think all in all, she's going to be absolutely thrilled with this. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe, hit the bell button and a few thumbs up would be absolutely brilliant. And in the meantime, take care. See you later. Ciao.